what we're really going to focus on is removing carbon from the construction process. So one of the terms I want to define first before we dive into this at all is the term embodied carbon. And basically what it means is how much carbon is emitted during mm -hmm. the creation of all the materials that you use to build something. So if we're talking about the embodied carbon in a building, we're talking about how much carbon was emitted to create the concrete, the steel, the glass, you know, the actual materials that are being used in that building. That's so, called embodied carbon. So like the life cycle carbon. Is, is that a good way of thinking about it? Yeah, so it's not, it's not how you operate. It's not what you're doing with your tools. It's not how the building heats and cools itself. It's if you're looking at the full lifespan of those materials, how much carbon was emitted during their creation. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So embodied carbon is actually a huge deal when you're making a new building. It can be up to 50% of the total carbon emissions are trapped in embodied carbon. So, you know, how you get those materials, how they're created, that's up to 50% of the carbon emissions of a new building. Um, it's tricky because you can make pretty bad early stage decisions when making a building. And engineers, basically, they don't have a lot of context on, during these early stage decisions. So they'll arbitrarily choose what the joint spacing is the, or the joist spacing is between the beams. Or they'll arbitrarily choose how many stories they want in the building or what type of material they like to use. And they do this mostly for aesthetic reasons or because it's something that they're familiar with. But what this company that created this uh, way to reduce carbon in construction called Price and Myers, what they say is these early stage decisions can actually cause a lot of downstream implications. Um, these downstream implications basically mean that there's useless embodied carbon. And by useless, they mean that if you'd made a different decision earlier on, you could have chose a different option that has lower carbon impact and maybe lower cost. Um, but because you made a wrong decision in the beginning, you kind of screwed things up down the line. So, so th this tool, just to clarify, it's primarily meant to be used during the planning phases, right? Like before you've started constructing anything, like before you break ground, you bring it with you to help you understand what the path forward is gonna look like for the number of years that you're gonna be building up this building. Exactly, so that you have to do it in the beginning before any of the designs are finalized, but what it does is it removes this burden of calculating all these different permutations at the very beginning, right? You know, there's so many different options, so many different outcomes. There's this tool, which I'm going to introduce. It's Price and Myers tool. It's called PANDA, the Parametric and Numeric Design Assessment Tool, PANDA. I like That's that. a good acronym. That's what I was yeah. going to say. That is a good acronym. There you go. Um, and it basically just helps engineers compare all the different options to reduce the amount of embodied carbon in, a diff in different types of building designs. Okay. So the way that it works is it uses something called a Monte Carlo simulation. And Fancy. I wasn't really aware of what this is, but it uh, traces its roots to uh, all the casinos in Monaco and Mon Monte Carlo and nice. all the slot machines. So basically, if you were to try to predict the outcomes of a slot machine, mm -hmm. there's so many different random possibilities between all the different, uh, you know, icons on the wheel that you basically just have to simulate every single outcome and then total up you know what they are at the end to be able to be sure what happens in a slot machine so monte carlo monte carlo simulation basically um when you have too many variables that you don't understand basically you have to brute force simulate every single permutation and then figure out the calculations after so that's exactly what they do here um all these different parameters material type beam spacing building height number of floors height on each floor, the loads on each beam, all these different parameters that engineers have to make these decisions early on in the design process, it basically calculates the outcomes for every single possible option for all of those parameters. So they said when you're designing a building, Interesting. it could be somewhere in the order of tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of outcomes are simulated by this tool, Panda. Um, and the reason it does that is because they are able to calculate by looking at all those different options how much carbon is needed, so how much embodied carbon there is, and also how much money you'll spend, the cost. Um, and so the user, the engineer using this Panda tool, can filter out these outcomes, these 20,000 outcomes, filter it down to like the top 10 or top 100 that they want to compare based on these parameters. So they say, you know, I want to use this type of material or it can only be this tall because there's a restriction in this in this area or it needs to have at least this many number of floors because we need to have this many people in there. So they enter those parameters, it filters out the extraneous ones, the ones that don't make sense anymore, and then it plots them on a graph. On one axis is cost and the other is carbon 
and it allows engineers to compare different options and say, so if I change this, how does it change the carbon output? If I change this, how does it change the cost? And it allows engineers to make the decision themselves. It's still the humans making the decisions, but it's just a tool to equip them uh, to make sure that they're making a choice that prioritizes cost, but also reduces carbon. So this sounds like a no brainer. Like if I was a construction manager right now, could I download Panda and start running estimations on what my project should look like? Well, Price and Myers, I feel like they feel like they've caught lightning in a bottle, right? Because of all these trends yeah. with wanting to reduce carbon emissions and they say the other half of carbon, which is operational carbon, those are all becoming much more efficient. So lighting, HVAC, tools, those are all becoming super efficient. Basically, if you want to keep cracking the nut on how to remove carbon emissions from construction, you need to figure out embodied carbon. Right. So they feel like they've found the key way to reaching carbon goals, being carbon neutral and saving the environment. And if you're a business and you're doing that, that's when you start to sell the service. So they say it's you know proprietary to them. If you want to use their software, then you've got a higher price in Myers, and they'll be able to use Panda to help you reduce the carbon emissions. Gotcha. I mean, I mean, kudos to their team for developing this product. I, I would love to see somewhere down the road them making like an open source variant of this so that more people could adapt to it. You know, it seems yeah, especially like especially for the widespread community goal of reducing carbon emissions right. from construction. It would be nice if not only Price and Myers, but everyone can start to reduce their embodied carbon in their construction. Something cool about this is that now because you have the tech doing the heavy lifting, it can stay up to date with the latest trends in materials and design, yada, yada, yada. For example, we talked about concretine and how it's 30% stronger. That means you're using less. It's better for the environment. And someone that's working construction might not hear about that for a year or two from now. But if this tool knows about it, it can start implementing it in your workflow right away. And I think that's yeah. great. Well, I'd say it's like the so what. So how well does it work? The so what? What's the significance of this? The Price and Myers team studied 30, constr 30 structures that they had made in the past. Mm -hmm. And they said if Panda had been used, it would have saved an average of 25% of the carbon emissions and 15% of wow. the costs. So basically, it's processing much more information than even their best engineers at Price and Myers, you know, the firm that they trust um, themselves. It performed better 25% in carbon reduction, 15% in cost reduction, because this computer can handle so many of these outcomes more than a human could possibly calculate. Dude, that's incredible. I love that. Me too.